I come from a city in India called Calcutta. And about two years back, I was lying in the sun getting a massage while my mate cleaned the dishes, the chef cooked food, the chauffeur washed the car. When I thought to myself, to hell with this life. <laughs> I'm going to the first world. It's a shared flat with high council tax. <laughs> In an up and coming part of Hackney for me. <laughs> for those of you who haven't been to Hackney in London, it truly is a shithole. <laughs> But yeah, frozen food, Russia and the underground network, terror threats every day. I'm living the dream. <laughs> and given the weather in England, I'm living a wet dream. <laughs> I have been making efforts to settle down and create, be more like a Londoner. I bought this charity wristband. <laughs> this one's against child labor in factories that manufacture charity wristbands. <laughs> Truth is, I came to this country to find a proper job. Only I've got here and found that all the jobs are going back to India. <laughs> really, I don't understand what the fuss is all about. You don't hear me complaining about the fact that we have no doctors in India. Because they're all here. <laughs> For the same reason, India is quite different to what you might imagine. No news agents or 7-Elevens. <laughs> no cab drivers. <laughs> no bloody chicken tikka masala. <laughs> the whole country is just full of computer programmers. <laughs> And call centers. <laughs> I mean, I was walking on the road in Delhi last month. And there was this beggar sitting there. So I'm about to give this fellow some money when suddenly the mobile phone rings. So I'm looking to see where my phone might be. And this fellow whips up a mobile phone. Well, to give him some credit, a homeless guy is not exactly going to have a landline. <laughs> But then he throws off his blanket and there's a laptop computer there. And he talks into this phone. Customer service. <laughs> this is Christopher speaking. <laughs> I know this fuss about you come over here, take our jobs. What a load of rubbish. We could take your job sitting at home. <laughs> Anyway, what can I say? My grandfather was quite keen for me to come to the UK. He used to say that the sun never sets on the British Empire. Of course, I've got here and found that the sun never bloody rises in the British Empire. <laughs> you know, when I got to this country at immigration, they put me through a Britishness test. And I thought to myself, are we so different from Great Britain? You're the only country I know that puts an adjective before their name. <laughs> Amazing Britain, <laughs> a fucking awesome Britain. <laughs> Then even the abbreviation can be fab. But I mean, are we so different? Half of your public transportation is bollocks. <laughs> Half of our public transportation is bullocks. <laughs> you waste far too much time talking to somebody who you think is an idiot at the other end of a call center telephone call. So do we. <laughs> you show sex in your movies. We show men and women running around flowers and trees. <laughs> Yet we've hit a population of 1.1 billion. <laughs> Apparently through cross pollination. <laughs> so like I was saying, they put me through this Britishness test. The most confusing multiple choice questions. Complete the sentence. To be or not to? A. B. <laughs> B. C. I mean, of course, I passed. And then this officer comes up to me and he says, "Your English, your English is pretty good for an Indian, isn't it?" So I said, "Well, you're not doing too bad yourself." <laughs> For a man with no career prospects and a looming pensions crisis. <laughs> By the way, it's not in it. It's isn't it, asshole? <laughs> you see, 
You can't afford to mess with us Indians. <laughs> you may have ruled us for 200 years, but you didn't expect us to follow you back, did you? <laughs> if you've been upset by anything that I've said today, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Heck, I come from the land of the Kama Sutra. I could fuck you in more ways than you can count. 